You're watching this video because you want to know the three indicators that can help you learn, understand, and use volatility. That is exactly what I'm going to be providing in this short video. My name is Jeremy Alexander Newsom, and my mission is to enrich lives with mentally liberating education. And I do that by teaching people all over the world what the stock market is, how to use it, and how to actively and consistently benefit from its movements. What I'm here to discuss are some indicators for volatility. The most popular is probably the Bollinger Band. Now, what the Bollinger Band does is it comprises volatility in the case of two bands. The smaller the band, the less volatility. So, for example, a few months ago back on Tesla, you can see a very, very low volatility range. And then eventually the markets break up into the band and you can see that the band does indeed expand. There are thousands of videos, hundreds of thousands of hours of content on how to trade the Bollinger Band. Essentially put, it's really, really useful to know is volatility expanding or contracting. That's really about it. If it's above what's called the 20 period moving average, if it gets into the top band, like so for example, right here, closing into the top band is a good signal for bullishness. And then you stay in the trend until it closes back below the 20 period moving average. Or you get a uh, candle that closes outside of the band that pulls away from it. So for example, right here, you'll notice the band went higher and the stock did not it closed outside of the band without getting back into it. So this could have been a signal to get out of the trade. Or of course, eventually when it closes below the 20 over here, you exit the trade, but you would have given up a lot of your gains from that move. But really, that's about it. It's a cool indicator. I don't use it very frequently because I probably already know what the volatility is doing. I already know what the movement's going to be doing. And the more you practice the Bollinger Bands, uh, obviously, the better you can get. We don't need Bollinger Bands, in my opinion, to look at the candle sizes of these movements to figure out, is Tesla volatile right now? And could we be selling options against it at a low or at a high to take advantage of its movement? What is a very useful indicator, in my opinion, is called the average true range, also known as the ADR or average day range. So average true range and average day range, I believe, are pretty much the exact same thing, or at least they're synonymous. So if you do average day range or average true range, so we'll click on both of these, you'll see that they are almost the exact same. For my nerds in the world, there is an extremely tiny differentiation between are you using only daily bars between the low and the high or on average true range? Are you also using the extended hours and all the post-market data as well? There's not a huge, huge, insanely wild difference, but realistically, I like using average true range because I like the word true. What this really boils down to is how much does a stock move on whatever time frame you're looking at? So you'll notice this is the daily. If I pop into a five minute, Tesla is going to show me the average range on a five minute chart. So just recently, each one of these five minute candles, the average true range of these candles was about $4 and 63 cents. If I go to a daily chart, you'll notice that uh, if I take off here, the Bollinger Band, uh, the average range right now on a daily chart is $52 on Tesla. Why is this beneficial? Well, it was not that long ago, about $62. So if you were getting into a trade now, and let's say you buy it, you're in it, and it's really just absolutely crushing. It's doing amazing. And you bought it after a $43 move. Well, you can pretty much safely assume that it has about $10 left for it to move. If you've bought Tesla after it's already moved 43 bucks, you probably shouldn't be holding for a huge, huge gain after that because the average current move right now is only 52. That's how I use it. And it's really, really helpful to be able to determine the average range of a stock and the volatility of that stock is really based on how much it moves. So this is a super helpful indicator, especially for day traders. You can find beta in Yahoo Finance, Google Finance, pretty much anywhere. This is the beta of Square and it's 2.38. So the beta of the market is listed as one. Stocks that have a lower beta are generally said to be less volatile and will move less than the actual broader S&P 500 index and market. Stocks with a higher beta will be moving more. And approximately how much more? Well, in this situation, 2.38 times more. So for example, if I'm looking at the S&P 500 right now, 2.69, the S&P is up today, which is really cool. 
but Block is up about 4.8%, which is approximately two times more. Now, not quite, but almost that way. So that's exactly what beta is. When I do scans, I actually really do like popping over in here to finviz.com. And when I click on screener and click on all, there's a really, really useful tool in here for volatility. So you can use volatility over particular point in time, or you can also come in here and select beta. Again, beta over one means it's more volatile than the market and could offer you larger potential returns. And of course, potential larger losses if you aren't fully understanding of risk. So something to keep in mind, I do use beta for some scans because I like stocks that move a lot, especially if you can calculate risk appropriately, safely, and you know exactly what you're doing, where and when. Anyway, I hope this was a helpful video. Thanks so much for watching. Three easy, super quick indicators that you can use to understand volatility a little bit more. If you have any questions or need any additional clarification on anything, post in the comment section below. Let me know how I can help you and I will do just that. You absolutely rock. Bye.